are continuing with our discussion on partnerships and um, last time we looked at the accounts of a partnership we looked at some of the facts uh, that uh, of course uh, surrounding the partnership business and some of the things we talked about which are again echoed in the lecture video uh, the fact that a partnership is a formation of two or more people a minimum of two and a maximum of 20 uh, we talked about the different types of partners uh, we have the general partners and limited partners again this is covered in the lecture video we talked about some of the contents of a partnership deed and again we mentioned that if there is uh, no partnership deed or in the absence of the partnership deed then the law has already been framed for you and the partnership act 114 of the laws of uganda are going to apply on your partnership then we say that like any other business a partnership maintains books of accounts and among those we have the income statement we have the balance sheet we mentioned that unlike the other forms of business the income statement uh, the income statement of a partnership is made up of three major parts we have the trading account we have the profit and loss account we have the profit and loss appropriation account we mentioned that the trading account and the profit and loss account are similar to those of the sole trader however when it comes to the appropriation of profits this one is a unique account which you're not going to find in the accounts of a sole of a sole trader so it was important for us to look at the profit and loss appropriation account when you download the notes you'll be able to find this profit and loss appropriation account which begins by capturing the net profit brought forward we add on interest on drawings which is income this is the income side then we begin to spend interest on capital which goes to the partners salaries to the partners and then at the end of the day it shows how the residual profits are shared between the partners according to their profit sharing ratios then of course in our discussion we mentioned that just like any other form of business the partnership business will also have an account okay we also have a balance sheet we also have a balance sheet and um, the balance sheet is unique like just like uh, the balance sheet how unique uh, other balance sheets could be the balance sheet of a partnership is a bit unique it will have uh, the capital and current accounts so the capital and current accounts form the major part of the uh, that equity part uh, what I may call the capital section but of course it becomes important for us to understand that there are mainly two major different forms in which the capital accounts of the partners can be kept it is important for you to note that we have the fixed capital balance method and the fluctuating capital balance method so we mentioned that under the fixed capital balance method uh, again this one is covered in the lecture video under the fixed capital balance method what happens is that we fix the capital account okay the capital account is fixed and does not does not change so we shall have uh, a, a capital account which is separate from the current from the current account good enough you have the notes and you are able to see the formats of the two accounts what are the elements and components of those two accounts then the other method of keeping the capital uh, the capital and current account is the fluctuating uh, capital account method and under this we don't distinguish between the current and capital we keep both the capital balances and the current account balances of the partners together in one t account good enough you have already downloaded the notes and on your page number four you are in position to see the format of the fluctuating capital account um so we, of course in our discussion we talk about the income statement of the partnership which is just like any other income statement we begin by recognizing the sales then we bring in the cost of sales the gross profit we list the expenses and then the appropriation of profits comes in just like we have just discussed in the previous page um, when it comes to the balance sheet the balance sheet of the um, uh, of the partnership is not different from any other balance sheet however its uniqueness is right here on the presentation of the equity or the capital uh, section of the balance sheet it has to make a distinction between the capital and the current accounts where the fixed capital method is used but if it's fluctuating then we, we def definitely combine those two and present only 
one account on the capital so of course we had to discuss a number of things and we looked at um, how uh, the accounts are maintained we looked at the journal entries and we were in position to uh, write uh, the income statement of a partnership however today we are going to look at the adjustments in a partnership if the partnership changes what is going to happen we need to bring uh, forward this discussion because it is highly examinable and i want us to discuss this today so we are saying that the partnership can actually change in its formation and structure under the following circumstances one we have on retirement or death of a partner two we have admission of a new partner three we have formation of a partnership formation of a partnership from two or more traders and four we have dissolution of a partnership now under these circumstances there's going to be a change in the uh, nature and the formation structure of our partnership so what's going to happen so briefly we are saying of course you have the notes but we are just emphasizing here we are saying that on retirement or death of a partner what's going to happen is that we are we are going to do some kind of valuation we are going to do some kind of valuation of the assets and then the goodwill uh, arising is also going to be put into consideration so we are saying that if there is death or retirement of a partner the things that we do include one revaluation of our assets we revalue the assets and then we shall see whether there is a gain or loss on revaluation number two we shall also bring uh, into goodwill we shall bring in goodwill however this may be maintained on a temporary basis as we are going uh, we are going to see again that's the same thing that's going to happen when we have uh, admission of a new partner we shall do some revaluation and also we shall also consider the evaluation of, of, of goodwill um when it comes to dissolution this is a different thing but we are going to see what exactly happens so the notes that you have on your on your accounts the, the, the ones that you have downloaded uh, discuss in detail the goodwill and revaluation of assets so when it comes to goodwill goodwill definitely we all know this is an intangible asset it's a non-current asset and it arises where the fair value of your net assets exceed the book values of the of the net assets the fair value of the net uh, the fair value of the net assets exceeds the book value of the net assets in brief or in summary the fair value of your assets exceed or the market value of your assets exceed the book values meaning that your assets are highly valued in the market than what is being depicted in the books of accounts and of course in the notes on uh, on page number nine we are given the reasons why goodwill may come in of course why businesses may be interested in charging new partners for goodwill one uh, because of the maybe the contracts that have been won by the company because of the continuing uh, nature of the business uh, because of the specialized skills of uh, the personnel employed because of the trademarks part, uh, patents brands today we have what we call influencers i think you have heard of now because of social media i think we are going to update and include the influence being an influencer being an influencer now i can charge you goodwill because i have a large following on facebook on uh, youtube i have very many subscribers uh, i have value so that is goodwill then the good location and um, of the business can can also be attributable uh, to the uh, goodwill arising then the cost of research and development re uh, reputation of the services and the quality products we are providing uh, freedom from legislation restrictions better quality of goods and so on and so forth so as we have mentioned the goodwill is going to arise on admission of a partner uh, a new one retirement and death of a partner dissolution of uh, our partnership and also change in the profit and loss sharing ratios all these ones you are given you have the discussions running on the handouts on the notes that have been uploaded onto your account now um what is very very important are the three major methods under which goodwill is treated in the books of a partnership these are highly examinable 
one we have what to call the premium method we have what to call the revaluation method we also have what to call the memorandum method so these are the two major methods in which goodwill is maintained uh, in the books of accounts of a partnership now under the premium method we are saying that the new partner brings cash in addition to his capital contribution and the excess of cash being the premium for goodwill so on top of the 7 million you're supposed to contribute maybe you're going to bring in 10 million then the excess of the 3 million is going to be a payment of your goodwill to this new business which you are joining so under the premium method the following ways uh, and of course the following treatments are done one the partners may share that cash premium without any record being raised in the books of accounts so when this guy brings us the other three million we shall sit on the table and say okay who takes 500 who takes 700 who takes 1 million we share it on the table and we don't keep any book of account for it um, if we don't do that uh, the cash premium uh, the cash premium is used to increase the partners capital accounts and uh, it is retained by the by the partner okay partnership so what we do we debit our bank account and then credit the partners uh, we, uh, we credit the old partners capital capital accounts um, if that is not done then the cash premium paid by the new partner is withdrawn by the old partners and no goodwill uh, account is maintained so what we shall do we shall debit the bank uh, account and then credit the old partners capital capital account and then on withdrawal of the premium by the partners we debit the old partners capital account and credit the bank the bank account um, that is one of the methods then the second one is the, the revaluation method and under this method according to this method the new partner brings in his capital contributions and agrees to compensate for goodwill okay the new partner brings in his capital contributions and agrees to compensate for his goodwill so the goodwill account is opened and is maintained in the books of, of accounts of the business and therefore it has to appear in the balance sheet as an intangible asset so this goodwill is shared by the old existing partners and increases their capital account so basically the accounting entries would be to debit the goodwill account and then credit the old partners capital accounts using the profit and loss sharing ratios the last method uh, is the memorandum revaluation method and under this one the goodwill account is raised but it does not remain in the books of the accounts therefore the goodwill is recognized and written off immediately okay it is recognized and written off immediately so we shall debit the goodwill account and then credit the old partners capital accounts using the old profit and loss sharing ratios so when we are writing it off of course we shall reverse we debit the partners capital accounts and credit the goodwill account so those are the three major methods uh, in which the goodwill is treated of course you are going to be looking at these methods the different numbers you are going to do and then it will make uh, more sense uh, in the numbers that we are going to attempt Again, as you have mentioned, um, when there is a change in the partnership, we revalue the assets, okay? And this may happen, of course, when there is admission of a new partner, when there is change in profit and loss sharing ratios, when there is retirement of a partner and death of the, of the partner. So the difference, uh, the revaluation is going to be calculated, okay? This is going to be calculated uh, as the new revalued amount new revalued amount or I can say the um, the gain and loss the gain or loss on revaluation we shall get the new revalued amount minus the net book value of the asset Okay, the new revalued amount minus the net book value so we are saying that revaluation is the difference between the current market values of our assets and their what and their book values and this is shared between the partners in their profit and loss sharing ratio so it is as simple as simple as that the accounting entries are given uh, when you look at your pages 12 spilling over to page number 13 uh, when you look at the accounting entries 
uh, when assets when we we revalue and the assets values increase, we shall debit the asset account and credit the revaluation account with the increase in the value. When there is a reduction in the asset is value, this one in accounting we shall refer to this as an impairment loss. Okay, when your assets lose value, it uh, come it amounts to impairment loss. So we debit the revaluation account and credit the asset account because the asset has decreased in what in value. When there is an increase in liabilities, we can also revalue the liabilities. And if we get any increase, we debit the revaluation account, credit the liabilities account with the increase in value. Again, we could revalue and the value of the liabilities decrease. So if there is a decrease in liabilities, we debit the liabilities account, credit the revaluation account with the reduction in the value. So uh, in case of a profit on revaluation, we debit the revaluation account, credit the capital account with a profit on revaluation. And in case we have a loss on revaluation, we shall debit the capital account and credit the revaluation account. In a nutshell, this would be the revaluation account. And I know you have already looked at it. Uh, the format of the revaluation account as you can see, uh, decreases in assets on the debit together with the increases in liabilities. Then increases in assets and, and the credit together with the decreases in liabilities on revaluation. The loss, uh, the loss on revaluation which is shared among the partners is on the credit side, whereas the profit on revaluation is on the debit side and again is shared among the partners. So we are going to support this foregoing discussion with um, June, uh, June 2019. Uh, we have, um, let me try to get this. Okay. Uh, June 2019. Okay, May 2019. Question number six. Question number six is going to support our foregoing discussion. Abilinga, Abilinga, Bonnie, and Cherot. So I want you to read through uh, our May 2019 question six up to the end there and see what we are required to do. Mm -hmm.